Welcome to a special case of determining a limit of a composite function when the limit of the inner function does not exist. Just because the limit of the inner function does not exist, it does not mean the limit of the composite function also does not exist. Let's take a look. Let's consider the limit as x approaches 2 of f of g of x. We begin by determining the limit as x approaches 2 of the inner function g of x. Below we have the graph of f of x on the left and g of x on the right. Looking at g of x, again we're approaching x equals 2 where we have this discontinuity. Notice as we approach x equals 2 from the left, we're approaching a y value or function value of positive 3. As we approach from the right, we're approaching a y value or function value of positive 4. This indicates a limit as x approaches 2 of the inner function g of x does not exist, but again this does not necessarily mean the limit as x approaches 2 of f of g of x also does not exist. What it does tell us is that we need to determine the left and right side of the limit of the composite function. So let's first determine the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of g of x. To do this, we first determine the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of the inner function g of x, which we can see from the graph is equal to positive 4, but it's important to notice it is approaching positive 4 from values less than 4 or from below 4, indicating the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of g of x equals the limit as x approaches 4 from values less than 4 or the negative side or right side of f of x. Now the reason we're talking about y values for g of x and then x values for f of x is because remember the y values or outputs of g of x become the inputs of f of x for the composite function f of g of x. And now let's determine the limit as x approaches 4 from the left or negative side of f of x. We're approaching x equals 4, this vertical line here, from the negative side or left side, which is from this direction here. And we can see we're approaching the y value or function value of 5. From here, if the limit as x approaches 2 from the left or negative side of f of g of x also equals 5, then the limit as x approaches 2 of the composite function is also equal to 5. If we don't get 5, then the original limit does not exist. So let's first determine the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of the inner function g of x, which we can see from the graph is equal to 3, and we're approaching the value of 3 from below, or from values less than 3, indicating the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of g of x equals the limit as x approaches 3 from the negative side or left side of f of x. And now we go back to f of x, and now we're approaching x equals 3, which would be this vertical line here. And we're approaching from the left or negative side, which is from this direction here. And notice we are approaching the y value or function value of positive 5. So because the one set of limits of the composite function are both equal to 5, the original limit of the composite function on the right is also equal to 5, even though the limit of the inner function doesn't exist. I hope you found this helpful.